uh, let's invite uh, Professor uh, Han Zhao. So Han Zhao is currently an assistant professor at the Institute for Interdisciplinary Information Science of Tsinghua University. He's also a principal investigator of the Mars Lab. Uh, his research interests uh, multimodal machine learning, autonomous driving, and computer vision. He was a research scientist at Waymo. He got his PhD degree at MIT under Professor Antonio Toraba and his master under Professor Ramesh Raskar. Uh, before MIT, he received his bachelor degree from the CKC Honors College, Zhejiang University. So let's welcome uh, Professor Han Zhao. So are you ready? Yeah. Uh, cool. Can, can you hear me? Uh, yes, can hear you. Yeah. Oh, okay. You can share your screen now. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. One second. Okay, cool. Yep, I'm very honored to be uh, here to present remotely to everyone and hope hopefully next year uh, we have a chance to meet in person. Uh, first about myself, uh, as introduced, I'm an assistant professor at Tsinghua University and um, leading a group called Mars Lab. And, but of course, our Mars lab is not limited to working on uh, autonomous driving problems. We also work on a series of interesting and challenging AI problems uh, like multimodal learning, robotics, novel sensors, and etc. If you are interested, please visit our website. And in the past two years, we have been actively working on the topic that we call uh, vision-centric autonomous driving, VCAT. And we have published or released a series of papers on this topic. Uh, that's what I'm going to talk about today. Deter 3D, Filter 3D, Muter 3D, HD MapNet, Vector MapNet. If you're interested, you can also visit our big project website, vcatai.github.io. Okay, now let's move to the problem of VCAT. The first question that may come up to your mind is why vision-centric autonomous driving? Actually, in the past decade, if you are very familiar with self-driving problems, most of the solutions are heavily reliant on LIDARs and HD maps. For example, we use LIDARs to measure the distance of ourselves from the obstacles. We use LIDARs to build a prior point cloud map to know about the wall beforehand, before we drive. And we also use LIDARs to locate ourselves to do localization in the map so that we can use the prior map for driving. So in comparison, vision is very underexplored. However, as we know, vision contains rich attributes beyond geometry. Uh, for example, if we look at this example, from this picture, we can see that um, what we can see is that the road is under construction and one lane is blocked by the orange cones and the construction workers and the vehicles are doing some constructions in that area. And one construction worker is waving to us, telling us stop and telling us to detour. This road is blocked, right? We can, we can tell a lot of information from this picture, but it's almost impossible for you to tell from a LiDAR scans. So uh, vision can provide us with this holistic thing understanding and make, help us make better decisions during the driving. The second reason uh, about using vision-centric uh, to do uh, vision-centric autonomous driving is because vision is very scalable. The scalability of vision uh, is almost non-replaceable by LIDARs or radars. Compared to LIDARs, vision is very affordable for all kinds of vehicles. For example, the de delivery robots, like the robot taxis and the robot trucks, right? 
the, the, the cameras are, are only like a hundred bucks or even, or, or, or even 20 to within a hundred bucks. And what is more important is that Vision has a mature protocols for data collection, data compression and transmission. So we can ex expect that more visual data being used in machine learning in the long run. Finally, uh, vision-centric autonomous driving does not mean that we will do vision-only autonomous driving. I personally believe that uh, sensor fusion is critical for the safety of self-driving vehicles. So we should work on vision-centric sensor fusion technologies as well. Okay, then the second question that you may have about uh, VCAD is that, how is it different from uh, 2D computer vision tasks. Here's an example that we call it perspective perception. Our input of the model uh, is a picture and we go through uh, like a unit like encoder decoder model and finally get a prediction uh, of its segmentations. When, I, when we say segmentation, that is the per pixel prediction of its labels. For example, a car on the left, uh, will be parsed as a car label on the right. It has a one pixel to one pixel mapping. And for another car, we can also find its labels in the same position in the output corresponding to the input. However, in autonomous driving, we do everything in 3D. Uh, sometimes we also call it BV space, bird's eye view space. That is, we do not really care how the results in the image plane, but we care about uh, how the object sits in a 3D world. In this example, the bus on the left will be parsed to the position uh, on the top left corner of this BV segmentation map. So this BV segmentation map is viewed from the top to down. So it looks a little bit weird it looks like a trapezoid, right? And let's say there's another car that is, that is further away and it will be parsed into a position on the top borders of the output segmentation mask. And as we can see, it's really hard to find the one-to-one -one correspondence between the input and the output. And most of the time, one pixel in the input image corresponds to array in the 3D space, which makes things really complicated. It's not no longer a one-to-one -one mapping anymore. Okay, so our work on VCAT tries to solve this challenging, uh, uh, solve this challenging problem. The inputs of VCAT mostly are surround view images from the surround cameras on, uh, on the vehicles. And one series of work, uh, there are two projects, one project called HD MapNet and another called Vector MapNet, tries to parse the static map elements around our vehicle from the bird's eye view, basically from the top, right? Our cameras are viewed from the surroundings. And however, our results are from the top. And another series of work, uh, we have three projects that called Deter 3D, Filter 3D, and the Muter 3D, tries to parse the dynamic objects around the vehicle. So whenever we have the static map elements and also have the dynamic objects, we're able to do the downstream task for self-driving, for example, prediction and planning. So today I will give an overview of all these five projects. So the first one is called Deter 3D, 3D object detection from multi-view images via 3D to 2D queries. This problem, the 3D detection problem from images is fundamentally a monocular 3D detection problem, which has been there for a long time. And traditionally people use pseudo LIDAR technology to predict depths for each pixel and then uh, after we have the depths for each pixel, we have a pseudo 3D point clouds. So that's why it is called pseudo LIDAR. And then we can perform 3D detection on the point clouds with some 3D methods. 
for example, like point net, point pillars. However, such methods requires additional supervision for the, for the image pixels, right? And also it, it is actually a two-stage method. So it will bring us some corresponding errors. If the depth prediction is not accurate, and then our 3D de detection will not be accurate as well. Then we can talk about the advantages of Dieter 3D. This is a method that we perform detection in 3D space, even though the observations are 2D. However, we do not reconstruct the 3D space explicitly like pseudo LiDAR. And a third, it avoids post-processing like NMS. So this is a fully differentiable, fully end-to-end -end method to do 3D detection from 2D images. Now let's dive into uh, the model architecture. First, for uh, the input uh, of the model are the surrounding images from surround view cameras. For each image, we send it into a camera backbone like ResNet to extract their features. And then the key ingredient uh, of our model is the query from 2D, 3D to 2D. Our ge geometric correspondence. The idea is that uh, we first initialize a query and it goes through the transformer decoder to decode into a predicted 3D bounding boxes, uh, into a 3D bounding box. And then we take its center as the 3D reference point. And then we rely on camera intrinsic and extrinsic to project the 3D reference point onto the 2D image features, and then extract the features and combine it with the positional encoding, the positional embedding, and finally send back to our transformer decoder. And we'll do it multiple times so that uh, Basically, this module, the query from 3D to 2D module, will learn where the objects are in 3D. And in, in the whole process, we only do, do 3D to 2D projection and no 2D to 3D projection. So the problem is well posed. Please mind the difference between our method and the pseudo LiDAR, right? Pseudo LiDAR predicts steps for each pixel. So this is a 2D to 3D thing, which is very challenging in the yield post. Our approach is well post in comparison. And finally, the computation of loss is very similar to DTER. We have a bunch of predicted 3D bounding boxes, and we do Hungarian matching with the predictions and the ground truth. And finally, to do the backpropagation and the model optimization. And Dieter 3D achieves really nice results on the new things benchmark. And uh, around October last year, uh, we achieved, we got the first place on the benchmark. And the next project I'm going to talk about is Filter 3D, a unified sensor fusion framework for 3D detection. This is a direct extension of Dieter 3D. That's why I put them together. Uh, let's look back on some previous work on LiDAR uh, camera fusion for autonomous driving. Um, there are, I can see like two streams of work. One stream is based on, is, is more like rely on LiDAR. It's basically they propose objects from, from the LiDAR sensors, from the LiDAR data, and then refine these boxes with the cameras. And the most represented work is this one, multi-view 3D object detection network for, uh, for autonomous driving. And another line of work rely more on cameras. For example, this paper got frustum point nets for 3D object detection for RGBD data. The idea is that we propose objects from image data only, and then refine them according to the LiDAR data that is formed that is within this frustum uh, 
based on the 2D detection box. So in our work, we ask, is there a simple unified framework that is agnostic to sensor types? As we can see, all these related works assumes that we can do some proposals uh, based on one type of sensors and then refine on the other. However, what if we have some other types of sensors? Um, is there a unified framework that is easy enough to adapt to multiple combinations or different combinations of sensors? As, uh, as you can see on the left, I list multiple sensors like 3D radars, low resolution lidars, high resolution lidars, 2D cameras, or and even 4D imaging radars. We designed this model, this framework, in the hope that these different combinations of, uh, of sensors can serve different types of vehicles, from robot taxis, from consumer uh, uh, vehicles, from truck to trucks to deliver delivery robots. The answer is still the 3D object queries that's proposed in DTER 3D. So a quick uh, look back on the model architecture of DTER 3D. We have image backbones and we have a 3D reference point that will extract features from the image feature maps and combine them in 3D, uh, combine with positional embed embeddings in 3D and send to the transformer decoder. And finally predict the 3D bounding, bo 3D bounding boxes. So the only addition uh, to the future 3D is that now the ref 3D reference point can support multiple types of sensors. It can not only extract features from cameras, it can also extract features from radars and lidars. As we can see, the lidar data are originally they are they sit in 3D. So the 3D reference point can directly extract features from them if the data is in say in the voxelized 3D space. For the radars, most of the radars are 2D. So basically, you can only detect. Uh, uh, detect objects on the road surface. Uh, you don't know the height of this object. Then the 3D reference point can do the same from 3D to 2D, uh, according to 3D to 2D correspondence and extract the features uh, in like a pillars, in, in, in a pillar way, right? The, the, the radar data are like pillars and the 3D reference point will project onto these pillars and extract them. The decoding process are the same as the DTER 3D. Here are some qualitative results um, of this future 3D model. We find some interesting examples. For example, uh, on the left is the result uh, from a forming LiDAR plus the cameras. And on the right is the result from the 32 beam LIDAR. We see that in the four, four beam LIDAR case, we can detect a very distant objects while uh, in the 32 beam LIDARs, uh, we cannot. The reason is that most of the LIDARs, the commercial LIDARs today can only see as far as hundred meters. If, be the, if beyond that scope, and we can only use cameras to help us to detect the small and the distant, ob distant objects. Here is another case of we comparing four beam LIDAR plus cameras, the fusion case, and the pure LIDAR, 32 beam LIDAR case. We see that the cameras help us better detect objects, like uh, detect some weird objects or out of distribution objects. In this, in this example, uh, the pure LIDAR model detects this garbage bag as bicycles. However, uh, in the four beam LIDAR plus camera fusion case, it will not be misdetected, uh, it will not be detected as bicycles. As we compare these a bunch of different results, we find one interesting uh, uh, quantitative result is that 
we found that if we use filter 3D, a four beam LiDAR plus camera can achieve a competitive performance with a 32 beam LiDAR. And as you may know, the 32 beam LiDAR is way, way more expensive than the four beam LiDAR plus cameras, right? So that's, that is that said, the future 3D model enables low cost solutions for autonomous driving. And the next project, also very related to Deter 3D, is called Muter 3D, a multi-camera tracking framework for 3D to 2D queries. Uh, there are a lot of works on uh, object tracking using uh, traditional common filters. And also common filters offers strong performance. And there are also some recent works on learning-based associations for tracking. However, here we are seeking a more end-to-end, -end, fully differentiable framework for object 3D object tracking. And that's why we proposed Muter 3D. Muter 3D is based on Deter 3D. We use a query-based approach to perform detection and tracking jointly. Most importantly, we achieved the implicit association within the framework. As you can see from this figure, uh, on the left is the uh, it's the tracking at t times uh, t equals to zero. And we initialize a bunch of queries to detect the objects within that frame. So at t times uh, t equals to zero, this is exactly the same as object detection with Deter 3D. And then when objects are detected, we'll throw away some queries that have not detected. Each query can capture one object and we'll throw away some queries that do not contain objects and we'll keep the queries that contain objects to the next time frame. And then at t times t equals to one, we have some old queries and we also sending some new born queries so that we can capture some new coming objects. And then we do the same, uh, same, same way as Deter 3D for object detection and we'll throw away some queries that do not contain objects as dead queries. And then we'll send the queries that contain objects to the next frame. And in this way, we achieve a fully end-to-end -end implicit association tracking model. Muter 3D achieves very competitive performance uh, on the new things uh, benchmark, and it got the first place in uh, early this year. Okay, that's all, all the things about object detection and tracking. And then for the next part, I'm going to talk more about how we understand the road, how we understand the map of our environment, uh, in our environments. The first work is called HD MapNet, an online map, HD map construction and evaluation framework. It was published in last year's TV PR workshop and, uh, and ECRA. Classical pipelines of annotating and maintaining HD maps involves a very complex pipeline and is very costly and labor intensive. Moreover, the road conditions are changing, right? And so if we want to use an HD map, HD map for long term, it requires maintenance and updates. So in this work, we want to we want a, a more an online method that takes camera images uh, and, and maybe LiDAR as well as input and use a neural network to directly output vectorized BVHD semantic map. Here's a short demo for HD MapNet. On the left are the input uh, surround view images, and on the right are the predicted map results. The red lines indicate lane boundaries, the white ones indicate the dividers, and the yellow ones indicate pedestrian crossings. We align the LiDAR point clouds just for visualization. This is not used as input. Uh, due to the limited time, I'll just quickly go through the model architecture for HD MapNet. 
the basic idea is that um, we have input surrounding camera images, and when it goes when the images go through a camera encoder, and then they will be projected onto a BV space, BV feature space. And if we have LiDAR, we can also encode the LiDAR signals, the LiDAR point clouds with point pillars, and also encode them in a BV space. So, and after they are concatenated in the BV feature, feature space, we'll decode the feature maps. Uh, the, decoding, uh, the decoding output will, will, are three maps. One is semantic mask, and the second one is instance embedding. We'll combine the semantic mask and the instance embedding to obtain the instance mask. And the third, third output is the direction map, maps, the direction maps. And then combined with the instance mask, uh, we, we combine the instance mask and direction with uh, non-maximum su suppression and to do, do some connection and post-processing, we'll finally get a vectorized HD semantic map as shown on the right. Here are more qualitative results. We can see that the uh, HD map net can accurately pr predict uh, the road boundaries, road lane markings, cro crosswalks very nicely, right? We also conduct some temporal map aggregation. And this is a very exciting uh, results uh, uh, that, I, that I like. As you can see, our car, uh, we didn't draw it here, but the car is driving on to the bottom right, towards the bottom right. And we can see the, the map gradually growing, right? And we, that means we have seen more of the map and we have a better understanding of the map and we can plot a bigger map over time. Okay, after we have the HD MapNet, we are considering another problem. The HD MapNet model architecture looks really complicated. It's basically a combination of a BV segmentation task together with some post-processing to finally get the map that we really want. When we talk a map, when we talk about map, they are vectorized because we really need to know each lane marking, we don't want the segmentation as our pixelized segmentation as our output, but we want instance-wise lane markings. We know which lane markings are we driving close to, which traffic lights we are attending to, and which, and how many stop signs are there, right? We need the instance level information. That's why we really want a vectorized map. Then the question is, do we have an end-to-end -end solution to directly produce the instance-wise uh, or the vectorized maps directly? Yes, the answer is yes. We have HD MapNet 2.0. It is called Vector MapNet, end to end vectorized HD map learning. As I said, the, the, the high level idea is that we have sensor data input and we want to directly get vectorized map as output with everything, including like the lane boundaries, the pedestrian crossings, dividers, and et cetera. Right? And in this black box in the middle, we want to do several things. First, we want to do BV projection as we did in HD MapNet. And the second, we want to do the map element detection and regression. How do we achieve that? The answer is transformers, just like DTR3D. We pose it as a detection problem so that we can solve it with the DTER or DTER 3D. And our second novelty is that we use polyline as the primitive for traffic elements. Because polyline is a very nice representation or primitive for the geometries. For example, we can use polylines to represent a line. We can use it to represent a curve, like basically a sampled curve, right? Uh, we can also use it to represent a polygon. Polygon is a closed poly polyline. We can also use it to represent points, like uh, points like uh, stop, stop signs, traffic lights, and so on. 
And finally, we we use a we solved the problem with a de, in a detailed way. Due to the limitation of time, I will not go into the details of this model architecture. But the basic idea is that we split the model into three stages. First, the BV feature map projection. And second is called map element detector. So we pose it a detection, like a detection problem. And thirdly, we will try to, uh, the third stage is called the polyline generator. And to finally, to generate the geometry of each polyline. Let's take a quick look at the qualitative results of vector map net. The vector map net results here is on the most right, rightmost column. And compared to other results, as you can expect, because we represent everything in polylines, so the lines will be much will be straight, right? Compared to pixelized or segmentation-based methods. Secondly, Vector map net can also capture some details that are, that are missed in other uh, uh, methods. And also we notice that sometimes in HD map net, we will get some loopy lines and in vector map net, we never see this such kind of results. And also surprisingly in the data set, we found that there are some mislabeled uh, lengths mislabeled lane crossings, uh, pedestrian crossings, sorry. And that is captured by our vector map net. Okay, finally, I would like to, uh, I think that's all about our work. And finally, I would like to acknowledge or thank all my collaborators and the students who work really hard uh, for this, our, uh, our uh, this, this joint goal of vision-centric autonomous driving. And I will also like to thank OpenMM Lab for their very nice toolbox. Most importantly, most importantly, we use, we heavily use MM Detection 3D, which also uh, spurs a lot of uh, impactful works. Apart, apart from ours, there are also other works called Focus 3D, uh, BV Former, uh, Transfusion, EV Fusion, and et cetera. So I encourage all the audience and try their MM Detection 3D toolbox. It helps a lot. Thank you. That's all my presentation today. Goodbye, everyone. Yeah.